Hi, I'm Crispin. I'm a master's engineering student at the Rhein-Main University in Wiesbaden, Germany. Today, I'd like to give you an update on recent developments on the IMF tool. Okay, so let's talk a bit about the video image preview widget. So as soon as we click anywhere in the virtual track, we can see the current image extracted at the current frame indicator's position, converted and rendered in the preview widget. Um, in this case, we have the frame number displayed down here, as well as the time it took to extract, convert, and display the frame. We can change the quality by going to the menu quality and select the resolution we need. So let me just select the lowest possible resolution at the moment. Here we go. We can see it now only took 28 milliseconds to decode and preview the image. So the lower the resolution, the faster the processing. Now we can drag the frame indicator and we can see that the rendering and displaying is quite smooth due to the low resolution. Let's just go to the processing menu and here we can see some processing options we have. For example, smoothing. We can disable smoothing by clicking on it and we can see the, the single pixels due to the very low resolution. Let me just enable smoothing again and disable scaling. The image is now shown in the center of the widget in a one-to-one -one pixel representation. Now, if we were to increase quality, we can see again the center of the image until the image is too big and only the, the center is extracted and rendered in the video preview widget. So now, going to processing, extract, we can define that a specific portion of the image is to be displayed in the screen. By default, we have the center, as previously mentioned. Now we can also select the top center portion to be displayed. Now here we go. And we can further increase resolution until we have the, the full image quality. Now by double clicking on the image, we can select full screen representation and by double clicking again, we can exit the full screen representation. So let me just enable scaling again and reduce the quality to 480 by 270. Okay, now we can start playback at this position by clicking on the play button. At the moment, we have a speed of, let me just select five frames per second enabled and playback commences with five frames per second. At the moment, frame dropping is enabled because we have processing real speed enabled here. We can disable this to select um, the consecutive processing of individual frames. Okay, now we can pause the player, maybe jump to a different position. We can increase the speed to 20 frames per second. And we can click on play. And the player buffers and it attempts to play with the selected frame rate starting at the current position. Now, of course, we can pause and resume playback. We can stop playback. And those are the basic options offered by the player. And now let's take a look at the TTML widget. The TTML widget is um, comprised of three distinct sections. First of all, we have settings and navigation buttons. Then we have a table listing all displayed subtitles. And we have a preview section. By default, HTML preview is used, which means that the subtitle styling is interpreted and rendered as intended or nearly as intended. Not all attributes are supported by the IMF tool at the moment. Um, besides HTML, we have a plain text representation, HTML and XML. In XML, we can see the entire uh, time text document. HTML, we can see the HTML or XML code of the current subtitle and plain text shows us the plain text, just as the name says, rendered in a default size and a default font color independent of the subtitle styling. So let's go back to HTML and navigate 
through the virtual track using our preview and next buttons. We can see the region is rendered as an overlay on top of the um, image preview and um, the visibility of the region can be toggled by clicking show regions, enabling or disabling the rendering of regions. Now using this button we can enable or disable text wrapping as we can see right here. The image preview column shows a small image preview in case of IMSC1 image profile subtitles. In this case we have text profile therefore we have a small text preview in this column. The relative time code and number of frames are shown in both these columns and here we can see the number of the virtual track. Now let's look at IMSC1 image subtitles. Let me just save this as a new CPL go back to the original CPL, add a new track, and add my subtitle resource. Let me just make this conform to the virtual track. All right, okay, now we can use the buttons to skip to the very first subtitle. We can see a small image preview is rendered here. With IMSC1 image profile subtitles, we only have the options XML and HTML. No plain text and no HTML. So no rendered HTML. We can also see the image rendered on top of the image preview widget. Okay, let me just navigate through the subtitle track. We can see that several more subtitles are added and these all originate from the same virtual track. Uh, here we can see um, semi-transparent PNG images rendered on top of the video or image preview. And now we have the ability to export all newly created CPLs and imported resources as a partial IMP. Let me just call this test partial, select the folder, and finish. Okay, now we have exported the partial IMP and the original IMP is opened again. Now of course we have the possibility of opening the partial IMP we just created. Gonna open, finish, and we can see our subtitles. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching this video. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section.